let us invite the persons reading the eulogy to come and read the eulogy of our dear president Mwai Kibaki so that we can all feel with his life and unite ourselves to pray for him. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Your Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, First Lady Margaret Kenyatta, um, Your Excellencies, uh, the Deputy President and the Second Prime Minister of the Republic, my Lord Bishops, uh, colleague governors, family and friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, reading the eulogy for you is myself, Nerito Moridi, and uh, Ryan Moy. I am a grandson of His Excellency, the former president, or as he is more popularly known in the family, Big Moy. Um, Your Excellency, perhaps heeding the bishop's request and in honor of the departed president, and the bishop did request that we should learn to say sorry more often. May I just request, please, turn to the person sitting next to you and say sorry. Uh, Your Excellency, your Excellency and the congregation, we thank you. So here it goes. Leo Tolstoy once said that there is no greatness where there is no simplicity, goodness, and truth. And here, therefore, is the life and times of His Excellency Mwai Kibaki, CGH, third president of Kenya. That Mwai Kibaki was a humble man who loved simplicity is well known. That he was a good and great man is an acknowledged fact. That he cherished truth and fairness is not in doubt. Mwai Kibaki recognized that serving others is life's greatest joy and its ultimate reward. To millions of Kenyans, he was the brightest of a thousand points of light. In him, Kenyans found reason to hope, the courage to dream, and a man to emulate. Mwai Kibaki's life is intertwined with, the history, uh, with our nation's history. But besides being a story of a commander-in-chief of great accomplishments, it is a story of a deeply devoted family man, a beloved son, a dear husband, a cherished father, and a grandfather, a treasured brother, and a dutiful uncle and relative to many. Mwai Kibaki taught us that public service um, is noble and necessary. He showed us that one can serve with passion and utmost integrity. In fidelity to our shared humanity, he heeded the call to serve his country and never looked back, earning the profound privilege uh, to serve as a teacher, lawmaker, cabinet minister, vice president, leader of the official opposition, and as president of the Republic of Kenya. He undertook his duties with a distinct sense of civility and dignity and will undoubtedly inspire many in Kenya, East Africa, Africa, and beyond for years to come. Sunrise. Mwai Kibaki was born to Kibaki Gedenji and Teresia Wanjiko on the 15th of November 1931 in Dungori village in the present day Odaya sub county in Nyeri county. He was the last born in a family of six. His siblings are the late Wagui, the late Gedenji, the late Kenywa Waiderero, who is here with us today, the late Derito, 
and the late Waruguru. During his childhood, uh, a time when Kibaki and his age mates routinely engaged in tending goats and calves near home, a peculiar structure elected in the area caught his fancy. He was to learn later that the unusual edifice constructed by Catholic missionaries was a sanctuary come school. As fate would have it, young Kibaki ended up being part of the new world uh, that this new phenomenon uh, portended. He attended his preparatory school, dubbed sub A and sub B there. At first, his father was a little skeptical about young Kibaki's peculiar venture. However, Kibaki's enthusiasm to become part of the novel adventure was unstoppable. And so his long and illustrious academic enterprise started in earnest. After successfully completing his foundational schooling, Mwai Kibaki joined Gatuyaini Primary School where he spent two years. Back then, there was no telling where this journey would uh, land him. However, being the diligent and bright boy he was, his prospective fortunes were already ascertainable. As it came to pass, uh, Mwai Kibaki was destined for greatness. Those who knew Mwai Kibaki from his childhood days through his time at Makerere University speak of a man who, right from the start, knew what he wanted to become and the path he wanted to follow to achieve it. Nothing, it would seem, was coincidental or fortuitous about his life. Everything seemed aligned to purpose, uh, purposefulness. Kibaki later joined the Holy Ghost Catholic Missionaries Karima Mission School, which is today Karima Primary School for another three years. From there, he went to Madari School, uh, later named Nyeri High School, before joining the Mangu High School, discovering Yonda. It was at Mangu High School that greatly transformed Kibaki's life. Started by Catholic priests, Mangu High School became the melting pot in which some of the best brains in the country uh, were chaperoned into greatness. The founders of Mangu High School were keen on establishing an institution firmly anchored in the Catholic faith and fully committed to the pursuit of academic excellence. After excelling at Mangu High School, Kibaki joined Makere University College in Uganda to pursue a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics, History, and Political Science. He emerged as one of the best students in the Faculty of Arts in 1955, attaining a first-class honors degree. After graduation, Kibaki was employed at Shell Uganda as an assistant sales manager. He resigned when he secured a scholarship to study for a Bachelor of Science in Political Science in Public Finance, sorry. I repeat. He resigned when he secured a scholarship to study for a Bachelor of Science in Public Finance at the prestigious London School of Economics and Political Science, LSE. At LSE, Kibaki became the first African to graduate with a first class honors degree. Mwai Kibaki returned to Makerere as an assistant lecturer in the Department of Economics. The university would, years later, in 2012, bestow upon him an honorary Doctor of Laws degree as a testament to his distinguished and outstanding contribution to public service at the national, regional, regional and international levels. The tree and its branches. Just as a farmer plants a small seed which grows to become a large tree with branches that yield a bounty of fruits as well as providing a safe and secure shade, Mwai Kibaki settled back home when he met and wedded Lucy Mudoni in the year 1961. Their union bore them 
one daughter and three sons Judy Wanjiko Jimmy Kibaki David Kagai and Tony Gidenji today the home is also filled with seven uh, grandchildren being Joy Marie Ryan Mwai uh, Christina Mudoni Jojo Mwai Jeremy Mwai Anna Lisa Mudoni and Leah Rose Mudoni Political inclination. Makerere was where Mwai Kibaki launched his political career. He was elected chairman of the Kenya Students Association as well as vice chairman of Makerere Students Guild during a watershed moment marked by heightened political consciousness right across East Africa. This was a time when the agitation to end colonial domination in Africa was at its peak. Kibaki seized that moment and distinguished himself as a champion of emancipation of the African. Mwai Kibaki's career as a lecturer lasted between 1958 and 1961, after which he resigned to become the first executive officer of Kenya's independence party the Kenya African National Union, KANU. Mwai Kibaki put his best foot forward to strengthen KANU for victory in the, in the 1961 elections. KANU garnered 19 out of 33 elected seats in the House of Representatives. Mwai Kibaki himself was elected member of parliament for Donholm in 1963 and appointed parliamentary secretary to the National Treasury. He continued to hold his position as Kanu's executive officer and gained immense respect across the board, much to the chagrin of his adversaries. Also notable is that Mwai Kibaki was a key architect, together with the late Tom Boyer, of the acclaimed sessional paper number 10 of 1965, titled African Socialism and its Application uh, to planning in Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, I want now to ask Big Moai to proceed. Joining the cabinet, Moai Kibaki became a full cabinet minister on May 3rd, 1966, when he was appointed Minister for Commerce and Industry. He would three years later be appointed to serve his nation as a Minister for Finance. During his tenure at the National Treasury, Mwai Kibaki guided the country through a, glo a global economic turndown and managed to steady the fortunes of a relatively young economy to safe shores. Given Kibaki's notable exploits in the arena of leadership, Former World Bank President Robert McNamara described him as one of the greatest economic brains to have emerged from Africa. Kibaki's former lecturer at Makerere, Professor Kenneth Ingham, believed that Kibaki had stayed long enough in academia. He would have ended up as a president of the World Bank. A rising star. Upon the demise of the founding father of the nation, President Jomo Kenyatta, in 1978, Kibaki became President Daniel Arab Moy's vice president. Kibaki's star was clearly on a climbing tra trajectory. While at the Ministry of Finance and later as vice president, Kibaki's adeptness, guided by his economic and fiscal outlook, transformed Kenya's economy. During that period, Kenya be benefited from a commodities boom propelled by monetary policies that led to consistent economic growth. Mwai Kibaki represented his people for 50 years, effectively becoming one of the longest serving MPs in the Commonwealth. That, though, does not mean he, do, he did not have antagonists and detractors. His unyielding resolve to succeed and conspicuous political charm handed him serial victory at the ballot. In 1988, Mwai Kibaki was moved from the twin docket of Vice President and Minister for Home Affairs to the Ministry of Health. He took this unseemly turn of events 
and seemly turn of events in his stride. Neither did he cause a stir nor turn into a rebel. In fact, Kibaki went on to tattoo an in indelible mark in the ministry when he momentarily waived cost-sharing measures imposed on healthcare service delivery by donors. The 1980s were uncertain times for politicians. The ruling party, Kanu, had tightened its grip on dissenting political voices than ever before. Through this difficult stretch, Kibaki maintained an aura of calmness and decency. Opposition leader. In December 1991, Moi Kibaki announced his reg resignation from government and formed the Democratic Party, DP. He thus started a new political journey. When Kibaki lost the presidential election in 1992, coming third after the late President Daniel Arab Moy and Kenneth Matiba, he found himself in unfamiliar territory, the opposition. For a man who had been in government all his political life and vice president for a decade, this presented a new opportunity to serve Kenyans. He even brought a fresh wit and humor to the House, and later in his presidency by treating the public to many memorable light moments, usually in Swahili. Kibaki's political triumph finally came in 2002, when the National Rainbow Coalition, NARC, picked him as its preferred presidential candidate. He got more than 65% of the vote. On the 30th of December 2002, Kibaki was sworn in as the third president of the Republic of Kenya on a wheelchair, having survived a near-fatal accident while on the campaign trail hardly a month earlier. He served as the head of state and government until 9th April 2013, when his successor, President Uhuru Kenyatta, ascended to the presidency. Thinking history, the indelible mark. No doubt a leading figure in Kenya's post-independence history, Mwai Kibaki won countless hearts of Kenyans. He has many admirers right across the globe, fondly referred to in several quarters as the gentleman of Kenyan politics. Kibaki will be remembered as an insightful and eloquent debater with a unique sense of humor. After Kenya dumped the single party system in the early 1990s, Kibaki became a leading light in nurturing a political culture of vibrant multi-party democracy. The ruling party was kept on its toes with Kibaki on the wheel as leader of the official opposition. His role in shaping multi-party democracy is etched in Kenya's, in Kenya's history. Once Kibaki became president, his government introduced critical reforms in the education sector, foremost of which was the globally acclaimed free primary education program. His administration also instituted comprehensive infrastructure developments in the transport and energy sectors. Access to better health care took a new turn during Kibaki's tenure. Kibaki will be remembered for championing the promotion of policies that promoted economic and social empowerment, democracy, the rule of law, and respect for human rights. At the regional level, Kibaki was at the forefront in supporting the objectives of the East African community common market of trade liberalization for the citizens of the partner states of the East African community. His commitment and conviction in matters of economic empowerment went beyond Kenya. Perhaps one of the most memorable achievements of the Kibaki era is the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution that ushered in a new dispensation whose far-reaching effects have redefined how Kenya is governed today. For two decades, Kenya had expressed their wish to change the constitution. The country had inherited at the dawn of independence in 1963. It had been an elusive goal. At Kibaki's first attempt, it did not fly. It was his second attempt in his second term that it was finally realized. During its promulgation in August 2010, Kibaki termed the achievement the boldest step the Kenyan people have taken towards changing their lives. Kenya's, 20, Kenya's 2010 constitution is definitely a huge part of the Mwai Kibaki legacy. In retrospect, 
Moi Kibaki servant leader credentials offer seminal lessons on how best to negotiate a more rewarding future to, to prosperity. Kenya is today more desirable in numerous ways courtesy of the solid foundation built by an exemplary icon who no doubt loved his motherland. Fare thee well. In victory, he was gracious and monogamous, magnanimous, and a magnanimous winner who brought unity. When he lost, he accepted the outcome with dignity and strove to come back better. He showed us how setbacks can strengthen the value, of, how setbacks can strengthen us, the value of patience and the power of never losing sight of one's goals. None of his disappointments could compare with one of life's greatest tragedies, the loss of his dear wife, Mama Lucy Kibaki, six years and four days ago. If there can be any consolation as we bid farewell to Mwai Kibaki, it is that he has been re reunited with the love of his life, as well as with his departed parents and siblings. Mwai Kibaki knew how to be a true and loyal friend, he honored and nurtured his many friendships. He taught us what it means to protect one's family as a husband, father, and grandfather, as well as what it means to be leader of formidable accomplishment. We honor and rejoice in the lifelong companionship he enjoyed with his now departed wife, Her Excellency Mrs. Lucy Kibaki, and, love, and his love for his immediate and extended family. Our earnest prayer is that the Almighty God will be kind to Judy Wanjiku, Jimmy Kibaki, David Kagai, and Tony Gidenji and their families. In the outpouring of sympathy and adoration that followed Kibaki's demise on April 22, 2022, it became clear that Moai Kibaki had an impact on his country and the world at large in a unique manner. His ingenuity in matters of economic management his deep love for his country and dedication to its transformation and his defining character as the gentleman who stood tall above all the mock of politics became the common chorus of the millions of people who mourned this outstanding son of Kenya and the world. Fare thee well, Your Excellency, and may your soul rest in eternal peace. Allow me to make an unusual request. Kindly, would we be upstanding? <laughs>